All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Limitless MD. Today, I have a special bonus uh, episode today. I'm going to actually uh, have excerpts of one of my coaching calls with one of my clients, and, and you're going to learn about what it means to have a practice integrator, what it means to have sort of a right hand. So if you're Batman, you need a Robin in your medical practice. And so a uh, practice integrator is crucial. A lot of people think, oh, I need to hire more doctors. I need a front desk. I need, you know. I need some more capital, but, you know, of all the things I can think about when you have someone who has what I call a high I um, SC uh, framework on their disc score, who can make sure that the trains run on time, who can make sure that all the things that you're, you're, you're trying to do actually get done and all can filter through all your wishes and, uh, uh, you know, projects and say, Hey, look, of all those things, I think this one's going to get us through the results quicker, faster, better. Let's do that. That's critical. So I'm going to take one of my coaching clients, Yemi, through a process to where I help him, t uh, you know, uh, select, interview, and find a person that might be a right fit. We also talk about SOPs, standard operating procedures, and how they're super important in any business to be successful. We also talk about sort of things a little bit higher up than SOPs, which are called playbooks, which are just general um how to's in every category of your business. So you need playbooks, which are like the top five to seven tasks that need to be done for every category or department in your company. And then the detailed versions of those things are called SOPs or standard operating procedures. Again, this is how McDonald's can, you know, earn $5 million with a bunch of high school students running the, you know, the franchise. So pay attention, listen in, let me know your thoughts and keep being phenomenal. What if you could reclaim hours of free time each week, create legacy building wealth, and devote more energy to your passion projects without giving up on your career as a life-saving MD? My name is Vikram Raya, functional cardiologist, high-performance coach, and real estate expert. And I'm here to give you the tools, strategies, and solutions you need to transform your life so you can unlock your limitless potential and achieve greatness all the while freeing up your precious time. Welcome to Limitless MD. Let's dive in. So in TriMed, what we're what I'm trying to do is look. I built a very successful practice, and you know, uh, at two locations, and I have some expansion plans as well. What I'm trying to look do is sort of Doctor Yemi proof the practice. Right now, I'm sort of the secret sauce, and you know, uh, not only am I the physician, I'm sort of the CEO, and I'm sort of the integrator and operations head, and so obviously. I'm the bottleneck in the business. So what I'm looking for is sort of a right hand. Uh, and we, we call this role an integrator. I would like to be the visionary. I need the integrator where, you know, I have millions of ideas. We take the best of what I have and we actually implement it. I want someone to help me, you know, take care of HR, admin, operations, finance, billing for both, both centers. Then I also want them to do, you know, help me, recruit the best of the best. We probably need to recruit another doctor, another NP, and some maybe front desk staff. And then finally, I would like to start putting into account systems. What does that mean? Well, for me, systems means, okay, how do we open and close the office, number one? What's the patient journey look like from the moment they make a phone call to the moment they go to the website, to the moment they walk in the uh, waiting room, to the front desk greeting, and then they get you know put in a room, uh, the clinical experience, and then when they leave, how do they check out the billing and um, uh, the follow-up, the appointments, the the reminders, all of that, and how do they get their prescription, and how do they get upsell? When I mean by upsell, I mean if there's some service that's valuable to them, are they being offered that you know in this process? And then finally, when they leave, how do I get a testimonial and a referral? So then we can. Uh, increase the cycle of all this. Next, I want uh, a marketing strategy where, hey, how are we, where are we getting all our patients right now? Are they coming from Dr. You know, Smith down the street? Are they coming from a website? Are they coming from you know, ZocDocs? Where are they all coming from? Let's analyze all that and let's double down the things that are working and back off on things that are not and increase other strategies. So we always have like five to seven intake funnels for all my patients. Then let's let's identify what's the right patient phenotype, the, the right patient avatar, the, the ideal client profile, the ideal patient profile. 
am I dealing with moms in their 30, who, late 30s who have depression? Am I dealing with uh, executives uh, in their 45s who have anxiety? Am I dealing with alcoholism? Am, am I dealing, what am I dealing with? What's, what are the different types of patients we're seeing? Let's put them to several buckets and let's identify and we figure out which ones we really want to go after. Next, I want to know who my competition is. Can you do a market survey? Can you find out the in, in a square mile, a five square mile radius, who are the best psychiatry practices out there? And who are we competing against? And who is equal to us, lesser than us, and who's greater than us? And who how do we be better than that person? Then let's 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 start using metrics, what I call KPIs, key performance indicators. Where are, are all the um you know, what are the top measurements we need to measure on a daily basis so we're showing success? You know, I like to implement sort of a more of a, a more a, a monthly bonus versus a quarterly bonus because I want to really make sure everyone's all in, on the same page. So what does that mean? How many, how many patients do we get seen per day? And how do we slowly, slowly increase that? Number two, uh, what is the average spend on the patient through insurance and through cash? Number three. What is um, the the return value? Of, uh, do the patients keep coming back and, and seeing me again and again? Number four, how many referrals am I getting? Uh, number five, I like, to, I like to blow up a couple of different pro pro parts of my practice. One is nasal ketamine. I really want, I'm at X amount and I need to get to 20% beyond X. And I like to do that in a certain amount of time. Can you help me do that? Uh, number two, I like to start an IV ketamine service, and it's I, I think it's very lucrative. And number two, it really serves the patients because it helps them break through refractory depression and other things. So I like to completely launch the program. Now I don't want to do that all at once because this is a lot of stuff. So you know, is is you know, does when when should we focus on that? Is it Q1 of next year, Q2, or Q3? And I, I like to implement you know quarterly quarterly goals for us as a team. What are the rocks we have? What are the, the big things that we accomplish every quarter? Now, if we try to go after so much, we can't do any of it. So I want us to sort of meet as a team every 90 days and decide, hey, what is our goals for this next 90 days? And we'll go after it. And then who's the owners of all these different goals? So I really want to run really good team meetings every week. And uh, there's a book called Traction that I think we can implement in our clinic. Great. Um, and then, uh, obviously, in terms of expansion, I need to slowly, slowly, I'll, I'll make a list of all the things I do, and I'll tell you all the things I like to delegate, and you got, you can help me unload my list of things to where I do only my zone of genius and everything else is there. So I like to probably see patients only two days a week. I like to really think about ideas and things. I also want to go and shake hands and, you know, connect with all the people who send me patients. And I want to do some marketing where my face and my my message is out there so I can attract more patients. I feel like that's my zone of genius. The rest of it, I sort of want you to sort of either you or your team start handling. And this is where I see us getting to 3 million, 4 million, 5 million, 7 million, 10 million. And I'm going to pay you this salary and I'm going to give you a productivity bonus based on if we hit our goals, you get this kind of bonus, you know. And, you know, or it'll be revenue. Like if you hit every revenue goal you hit, you get a piece of the pie because I want you to be in alignment with my goals. I want you to have skin in the game. So this is what I'm looking for. And, and also one last thing I forgot to mention is I'm also looking to get a little bit more tax based, perhaps with the IV clinics, perhaps with the concierge practice. But I want to start in implementing not only a, in, uh, a regular practice, but a cash based practice. And then one last thing, as we go through a recession right now, how can we be protective? How can we be defensive? How do we know exactly how to deal with people maybe losing their jobs, losing you know income and losing their employment? I want to make sure we're ready for the recession. Okay? So this is my vision. Tell me if this works. Tell me if you'll feel successful, that you can be successful in this. And, uh, and uh, you know, give me some specifics as I ask you these kind of questions. Thank you. That's a lot. <laughs> okay. Now, no, no one person can probably do all of it, but at least you know, if I were you, this is what's on my mind as I'm trying to grow the thing. Thank you. So that's different than a oh, a practice manager, who's like, wah wah. Yeah. Like if you pay, you know, one sixty, one seventy, but this person's amazing, you don't even have to think about it. They'll grow without you almost.
Or you can say, hey, look, your base is this much, but guess what? You get to participate in all of the every every five hundred thousand dollars we grow, I'll give you a piece of that in revenue. Or every million dollars we grow in revenue, you get a piece, or whatever, whatever that is. Or if we hit our quarterly revenue goals, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be completely you're gonna get five percent of that, ten percent of that, whatever that is. I don't know what, what the number is, but it, it really is incentivized for them to they, they can grow the thing. And I think this is it could be a girl, but it could be a guy for this thing. Okay. Roll. Straight, straight enough, I've seen more. So I've only had a few men, uh, most mainly females for some reason. But the, do you see the list I just told you? Oh yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a lot. I, that uh, that level of player is a different level of player than probably what you're looking at. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because if you think about it, if you have someone who can handle that, some of that stuff, you actually have a Batman and a Robin. Otherwise, you know, Batman and some Joe Schmo, you don't even know. I'm looking for a vice president. I'm not looking for like a, a you know a regional mayor. Now, if you're the president, I'm looking for your vice president. Some the reason the reason the reason why is now this can be groomed. This person can slowly slowly grow. But if you want to get out in five years, then paying a little bit more upfront, like it's like I could have used a Filipino VA. Then I could have used some US based VA, but I ended up getting Michelle, you know, and I paid her, you know, a good amount. But it, it the ROI was fantastic for me. Yeah, yeah. I see, I see your point. I, I was also thinking that someone who's going to want to get that amount you're talking about wouldn't want to work. Wouldn't want, I saw some I saw some resumes that came through that I was thinking, oh my goodness. Just reading the resume alone, I felt intimidated. <laughs> I was thinking. This person, this is this this person looks like someone who should, who should be working at Google, right? Uh, you no, know, no, kind no, of no. person. If you if if you look, you in, interview them, find out what they were asking, and you know potentially it's good. But you're going to go through the process. Like you should listen to this, write it out, and 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 go to use a who book, and don't worry about them how much money you have to pay them. Find the right person, and if it's worth it, then we we can have that discussion. Hey, they're asking for this. What do you think, Vic? Okay. To pretend pretend you have an unlimited budget. Go find the right person, and then we'll discuss what's the right thing to pay. And you, we can tell them, hey, look, we'll get you that number, but it's not going to be upfront. If you hit these goals, you'll get that number. Okay. Okay. I wanted to be, you know, obviously, but but to even get someone interested, you got to have the price point a little bit to where it makes sense for them. Okay. Wow. And remember, with inflation going on, salaries have gone up. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. Of course, I used to I used to see practice managers for fifty k, sixty k. You know, now that it's hard to find someone like for that price. And you're not looking for a practice manager; you're looking for an integrator. You don't want to use the word CEO, be CEO, because then they'll get they'll think they deserve more. But you say, "Hey, I'm looking for a practice integrator." You know, a practice manager with uh, with the capability to grow. Thank you. Um, um, I'm good. Okay. Okay. And, and then uh, get the book systemology. And what I would do is on a Saturday morning or one of these mornings and you have nothing going on, put some nice music on and write out like on a Google Sheets. Hey, this is on, this is front desk check in. This is this, this is this. And literally create 30 different processes that are in your clinic from clinical to admin to everything. And then just write the top five steps, the five five to seven things that ha have to happen. Big picture, not, not, this is called creating playbooks. SOPs or standard operating procedures are going really too, 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 too deep. We don't want that. We just want, okay, what are the five big things that happen when you check someone in? Okay, this, 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 this. Okay, next process. Okay, this is how you start someone on nasal ketamine. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, great. This is how you see a new psychiatric patient. Okay, you fill out the note. You you talk to them. You diagnose them. Then you 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 close out your note and then you check them out. Boom. Like that's what I'm talking about. I just you can do this in like two hours. Do this for every aspect of your business. Okay. And then you can call it, you know, try med playbook. Okay. And so these are all the playbooks that you have. Now it's up to this person to take these playbooks, flush them out, and then make more detail, and then teach them to your staff. So then they follow checklists. 
You want your company to be a bunch of checklists. That's how McDonald's can hire some Joe Schmo college teenage student and make it the a uh, five million dollar revenue McDonald. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Vic. All right, brother. Okay, I'm gonna let you go to clinic. We'll talk soon. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Limitless MD. If you found value from this episode, I encourage you to share this episode with a friend and let me know by leaving a review. For more information, make sure you check out the links in the show notes below or simply visit VikramRaya.com. So until next time, my friends, be phenomenal.